Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. Today I'm working on this old knotty pine dresser that I thrifted a few weeks ago, and I'm planning on stripping back this beat up dark old finish and giving this thing a new, lighter, fresher, tan washed look instead. So this big old eight drawer dresser is knotty pine and mostly solid. I can see from looking at the back that the top is solid and the sides have a decently thick layer of veneer over some press board. It's a great sturdy piece of furniture that has obviously been very well used, but other than the finish, it's still in really great condition. The drawers aren't dovetailed, but they're all clean, fully intact and functional, and it's got some great, pretty classic lines. My plan for this one is to strip off this dark finish, change out the hardware and restain it with a tan paint wash to lighten it up and give it kind of a newer rustic vibe, if that makes sense. Pine is a super soft wood, so it marks really easily, which makes it good for a more natural finish anyway. Starting things off the way I always do, by pulling out the drawers, removing this hardware, and giving everything a really good clean. As I go through this process, I'm always checking out the guts of the piece, like the drawer guides and tracks, joints, and anything else that might need to be fixed along the way. I washed this thing down with some simple green all-purpose cleaner to remove any grease, oils, or waxes from the surface because I was planning on just sanding this old finish off and I didn't want to grind any of those things down into the wood, but as you'll see soon, I ended up needing to use a chemical stripper on here, which would have dealt with all of that stuff on the outside of the dresser anyway. I grabbed an 80 grit sanding screen and my five inch orbital sander to start blasting through this finish. But after about 15 minutes, I realized that this stuff was way tougher than I thought. And it was gonna take me forever to get it off. So like I said, I decided to switch things up and busted out my heavy duty furniture stripper to help get through that tough stuff much more efficiently. This Circa 1850 is only available in Canada, I believe, but I think the US version of this would be the clean strip 15 minute formula that my American friends can get in Home Depot down in the States. This stuff is extremely caustic. So I popped on my respirator and some chemical resistant gloves and then poured a little bit of this into a separate container so that I could brush it over each surface with a cheap chip brush. It blistered this finish almost instantly. So after I'd coated the top, I grabbed a flexible putty knife and just started scraping off the goop. If I had any spots that weren't coming up easily or had dried out before I got the scraper to them, I just brushed a little more stripper to loosen those up again. For any of these curved edges that I couldn't use the flat scraper on, I just dipped some 4 aught steel wool into some more of the stripper and just used it to scrub the finish away. It ended up taking me about an hour working one surface at a time to get all of this finish stripped off the frame and the drawer fronts. And I just collected all of the mess involved in this in a piece of recycling so that I can dispose of it properly. This product doesn't need to be neutralized or rinsed off at all, but it does leave the wood pretty wet. So I just left everything to dry back out overnight so that I could get back to sanding in the morning. Again, back to my coarse 80 grit, it was way easier to remove just this thin layer of stain now. I 
wasn't going to be able to get a sander around this piece of trim across the top and it was just tacked on there with a few little finishing nails so I used my scraper and a hammer just to gently pry that up this way I could get a good clean sand on the frame and then I can use one of my foam sanding abrasives to get the stain off of that trim piece without messing up the detail Once I had all of the large flat surfaces back to the bare pine, I switched out to my 3x4 detail sander and some foam to strip all of those routered curved edges. Getting all of this sanded and that dark stain removed took me a little over two hours, so this definitely wasn't a fast flip. But once I had all of the 80 grit done, I needed to fill in the old hardware holes it's super common for this staining to happen under old hardware. It's just a natural process that wood goes through when it's exposed to light, but it can be pretty tough to get rid of these marks. I'm kind of going to just cross my fingers and hope that my new finish and the new cup pulls that I've ordered will hide all of these ghost marks. Anywho. I mixed up some of this quick wood epoxy that comes in a tube with two colors of putty that you mix together to cause it to harden. You only want to mix the amount that you can work with in the next five minutes because it does start to cure up really quickly. But I just rolled this into some little snakes, dropped those into the holes and then stuffed it through until I had a nice solid fill. I also like to leave just a little mound of excess on the top to help me sand it flush to the drawer front without anything sinking in or creating a divot. I set the drawers aside for a bit and started with my next round of sanding on the frame with some 120 grit this time. It's really important to work your way back up from a coarse grit sand gradually to close and smooth that wood grain so you don't end up with those annoying sanding swirls. It's also important to get all of the dust off of the surface in between grits so that you're not grinding that coarser sawdust back into the wood which also makes those swirls. I wiped this off with a microfiber cloth and then took my time letting the sander really slowly do the work of smoothing out this wood. After another wipe down, I switched to my final grit, which is gonna be 180 to get these surfaces smooth enough to finish. a few new finishing nails to reinstall this trim piece filled in the holes with some lightweight wood filler and gave everything one last dust okay so now i have this beautiful totally naked dresser i do want to restain it because most of this is a little on the yellow side and like we already talked about the wood is going to naturally darken to kind of that orangey yellow pine color that I'm sure we all know and that's not what I want on here so I'm going to restain this with a paint wash. I'm using fusion mineral paint in the color Algonquin because I absolutely love the color of it as a wash but you can use literally any water-based beige or tan paint for this. I added about two or three tablespoons of paint and about a half a cup of water here to thin it out. And I'm just gonna brush this mixture right over the wood. Again, working one section at a time so that I've got enough time to work with it before it starts to dry out. And once I had each section coated, I just took a clean microfiber rag and wiped it back and forth across the surface, 
always going with the direction of the wood grain to pick up any excess. If you want something a bit more pigmented or opaque, you can add additional layers or just add some more paint into your mixture and vice versa. If you want something lighter, not as much paint, more water. Once I had the whole dresser done, I left my paint wash to dry for a few hours and then it was time to seal it up. I'm using this water-based polyurethane from Bayer in their matte sheen, which still has quite a bit of a sheen to it actually. I'd say it's closer to a satin than a true matte, but I gave my can a really good mix to get all of those components well incorporated, and then I strained it into my electric sprayer. You could totally apply this with a brush or a sponge too, but the sprayer is what's easiest for me. This stuff is really thin and spraying too much is going to make a giant drippy mess. So I turned the power or boost setting on my sprayer down to a two from the eight that I usually spray my paint at. And I also decreased the amount of product coming through the nozzle. And then I started applying my first layer. Now that watery paint wash definitely raised the grain of the wood or caused it to plump up and feel really rough again, which is totally normal. But I like to apply my first layer of poly right over that roughness to seal in my paint wash before I do any further sanding to smooth it out again. So I don't take away any of the color that I just laid down. So after my first coat of poly had dried, I grabbed some 400 grit sandpaper and rubbed down each surface really lightly just to get everything super silky. I wiped away that dust again and sprayed on one more final layer. While I waited for the new pulls to be delivered, I decided to condition the wood on the inside of these drawers with some Wise Owl Furniture Salve. This is a blend of wax and hemp oil that absorbs into the wood and then hardens as it cures to leave a conditioned, really protective finish. I like to buff it into the wood with a small wax brush and then wipe away all of the excess that didn't get absorbed with a clean rag. I also put some of this on the wooden drawer tracks to lubricate them a little bit too. Once my hardware finally showed up, I measured out and drilled where I needed the new holes and screwed it all in place. One more look at my dark dated thrift store find that was in decent condition but definitely needed some love and here is how my new version of this dresser turned out i love all of the variations in the wood grain and the soft beige tone it has now although knotty pine will always lean towards a more rustic style i think this dresser is pretty versatile and would fit into a lot of different decors Thank you so much for hanging out with me again. I hope you got some good inspiration to use on a project of your own. I'm gonna leave a few more refinishing videos here for you to watch next if you want, and I will catch you all next time.